college, I clearly remembered the rust left by the typhoon millennium in 2006. Glasses were suspended. When we came back, we were appalled to have witnessed, just as we were about to enter the campus, that the century-old acacia tree in front of our admin building was completely uprooted. It was very devastating because that tree was a symbol and a landmark of the university. I share the story of the acacia tree because I used to be one of those people who hated cutting trees, even the trees being felled by strong typhoons. However, one of my professors in college quoted this, and I will not forget what she said, that the nature has its own way of harvesting itself. She was probably referring to the effects of natural phenomena to trees, and that whether we like it or not, they get uprooted or they get harvested naturally. Well, sure, trees should not be cut, period. After all, it is the obligation of the state to protect the remaining forest cover areas of the country, not only to prevent flash floods, but also to preserve biodiversity, protect threatened habitats, and allow natural regenerations of residual forests. But there is science, and we have to trust that nature will be replenished in time. Science is a never-ending study, and while waiting for the most effective way to regain ecological functionality and bring back biological productivity, the state shall regulate the cutting and keep the disturbance to a minimum for the future of the coming generations. There are rules and regulations in place governing the cutting, removal, and relocation of trees found in both public forest lands and private lands that must be observed. So first up, we have the Executive Order Number 23, which was signed on February 1, 2011, declaring a moratorium on the cutting and harvesting of timber in the natural and residual forests and creating an anti-legal logging task force. By natural and residual forests, we mean that these are the forests composed of indigenous trees not planted by man. Under EO 23, it orders to implement the prohibition from issuing new logging contracts, review of all existing agreements, and terminate or cancel those who will be found violating. There is also an implementation of a forest certification system in accordance with UN standards to ascertain the legality of source and the development of the National Greening Program through Convergence Initiative which we are implementing right now, as worded by the Enhanced National Greening Group. The EO also orders the closing or shutting down of all sawmills, veneer plants, and other wood processing plants who are unable to present proof of sustainable sources for at least five years, and that the Department of Education shall be given the priority in the use of all confiscated logs. Of course, since our topic for today revolves around the tree cutting operations, the EO23 is very adamant and clear to prohibit the issuance and even renewal of pre-cutting permits except for the following exemptions. Clearing of road right away by the DPWH, site preparation for tree plantations, and application of silvicultural treatments. Moreover, there are also similar activities as enumerated under the Memorandum of Executive Secretary Paquito Shawa Jr. dated October 20, 2011, which shall also be included in the exemption. These are the renewable energy projects, construction of transmission lines, telecommunication lines, substation sites, and other power generation projects, including maintenance activities on existing lines, infrastructure projects taken by government entities to private contractors, trees in public and private places that pose danger, other priority activities of government and government-approved projects and programs certified as a priority project by the President of the Philippines, and mining operations with approved environmental protection and enhancement programs. One of the policies that were signed and promulgated just recently is the Department Administrative Order No. 2021-11 or the guidelines in the processing and issuance of permits for the cutting, removal, and relocation of naturally growing trees. Who is covered in this policy? Any person or entity with an application for cutting, removal, and or relocation of naturally growing trees, which is to be evaluated by the DNR, either in the public or forest lands or private lands. Except, take note of this one. Those applications filed by the national government agencies pursuant to DAO 2018-16 and DAO 2020-06 
which I will discuss later on for the concerned sender or implementing sender shall be the approving authority. However, the DAO does not cover the trimming, pruning, cutting, and removal of trees within power line corridors pursuant to RA 11361 series of 2019 or the Anti-Obstruction of Power Lines Act, which no longer require tree cutting permit, but power line owners or operators shall give due notice to the DNR field offices in the conduct of clearing operations. I would like to highlight that the trees should be naturally growing, meaning these are naturally occurring regardless of size and economic utility, including parts thereof, such as stumps, tops, and branches. So yes, the trimming of branches or pruning of tree tops is governed by this policy also. Basically, the only objective of this policy is to streamline the procedures and approval process, which is really important, especially since we are in the government, and that the delivery of goods and services to the public should be efficient. This is also consistent with the provisions of RA 11032 or the Ease of Doing Business Law. How do we proceed? The processing of tree cutting applications will start upon finding that the submitted documentary requirements are valid and complete based on evaluation and assessment of the concerned center or implementing panel. The applicant may also visit physically or inquire through email or phone call regarding the requirements that need to be provided prior to the filing of the application. Remember, all applications should emanate from the concerned senior implementing panel. For in the case of cutting applications within Metro Manila, you may proceed directly to the DNR National Capital Region Office. And any applications with incomplete or invalid documentary requirements shall be returned to the applicant without prejudice to refiling. Meaning if there are lacking documents upon filing or there are documents that need further validation, the applicant can still apply again and provide the required documents. Please take note that the documentary requirements that I will be mentioning are only applicable if the location of the cutting application is within private lands. So what are these documentary requirements? We have letter of application, authenticated copy of land title or certificate of land ownership award, issued by the Land Registration Authority or Registry of Deeds, whichever is applicable, with approved sketch map of the area being applied for. Utilization plan. If application covers 10 hectares or larger, with at least 50% of the area covered with forest trees. Report to be signed by the forest officers who conducted the timber inventory to include the tally sheets, stand and stock table, geotag photographs, including the recommendations. Endorsement from the concerned LGU interposing no objection to the cutting of trees under the following conditions. If the trees to be cut fall within one barangay, an endorsement from the barangay captain shall be, shall be secured. If the trees to be cut fall within more than one barangay, an endorsement shall be secured either from the municipal or city mayor or all the barangay captains concerned. And if the trees to be cut fall within more than one municipality or city, endorsement shall be secured either from the provincial governor or all the municipal city mayors concerned. We also have endorsement from the local agrarian reform officer for areas covered by CLOA. And of course, we have to provide a copy of the ECC or CNC if applicable. So the DNR Regional Office or the EMB Regional Office determines if the tree cutting act activities will require ECC or CNC based on the extent of tree cutting operations, location, and among others. Say, the cutting will take place within environmentally critical area, so you will need an ECC for that. So how about the requirements for the cutting of naturally growing trees within public or forest lands? It's almost the same as that of the previous slide I have shared with you, like the letter of application, inventory report, endorsement from the concerned LGU, a copy of ECC or CNC, only this time it's mandatory and not as applicable, but since the cutting shall take place within forest lands, then there should be a copy of land tenure instrument or agreement and approved development or management plan because you cannot occupy or develop anything in a forest land without an approved contract with the government. The conduct of the inventory for naturally growing trees should be in accordance with 
DMO 1991-08 or prescribing the guidelines in the implementation of DAO 1991-24 or the shift in logging from the old growth forest to the second growth forest. And also, it has to be in accordance with the FMB Technical Bulletin No. 3 or the measurement standards in the conduct of timber inventory. For your reference, 100% timber inventory shall be applicable on private titled land and tenured areas and 20% timber inventory if within IFMA and CBFMA. Prior to the implementation of this policy, three cutting applications except those applied by the identified national government agencies for DAO 2020-06 are evaluated, processed, and approved by the DNR Undersecretary for Field Operations. Now, all new applications, even the requests for extension of tree cutting and earth falling permits for naturally growing trees, shall be issued by the concerned regional executive director. Emphasis on the issuance of cutting permits for public purposes of the national government agencies shall be processed and approved by the concerned central or implementing federal. Now, this one is very important to remember. The duration of the permit is dependent upon the volume granted following the prescribed schedule which you can see on your screen and should not exceed one year at any one time provided that only one permit should be issued within a period of one year for the same applicant an extension of it may be allowed depending on the case for a similar period with the same applicant also now everyone will wonder when will the effectivity of the permit will be the permit is committed and executory upon the receipt of the center implementing panel and should automatically expire as soon as the trees are harvested and disposed of or once it reaches the validity period, whichever comes first. All naturally grown trees and harvested inside private and public forest lands shall be subjected to payment of forest charges pursuant to RA 7161 or an act incorporating certain sections of the National Internal Revenue Code 2 PD 705 as amended and providing amendments by increasing the forest charges on timber and other forest products. The matrix that you can see on your screens is the rate of forest charges based on the 1999 FOE market price of forest products. The rates reflected are consistent with DAO 2000-63 which was suspended in 2001. But since we have included these rates in this policy, in effect, the rates of forest charges provided under DAO 2000-63 shall apply. And since we do not just cut or harvest, gather or transfer trees without the necessary permit, this order penalizes any person or entity that commits or will commit unlawful cutting or gathering of forest products in any forest lands with a fine of not less than 10,000 but not more than 100,000 or imprisoned for a term of not less than 4 years in one day but more than 6 years for both. This is pursuant to Section 77 of PD 705 as amended. This policy repeals DAO 2016-07 dated May 19, 2016, particularly on page 1 under Licenses, Patents, and Deeds, Forestry-Related Cutting Permits, in which the issuance of free cutting permit for naturally growing trees is delegated to the Undersecretary for Field Operations. And of course, other administrative orders, memorandum circulars, and official issuance which are inconsistent herewith are hereby repealed or amended accordingly. Moving on, since we are still talking about the regulations governing the cutting, removal, and relocation of trees within public forest lands, which I also happened to mention earlier, I will now be presenting to you the DAO 2020-06, signed on February 12, 2020, amending certain provisions and expanding the coverage of the DNR Administrative Order No. 2018-16, or the guidelines in the processing and issuance of permits on the removal and relocation of trees affected by DPWH projects. In this case, the trees being mentioned here are either naturally growing trees or planted trees that will be affected by the priority projects of the government. Just to give you a summary of DAO 2018-16, the policy is a response to hastening the processing time and issuance of permits for trees that will be affected by infrastructure projects of the DPWH. Basically, these applications must be duly certified as government projects of the agency. 
So the DAO 2020-06 amends certain provisions of DAO 2018-16. Particularly, this expands the coverage of the pre previous DAO, which only covers national projects by DPWH. Now, this DAO covers the application for the cutting and or earth volume of trees for the construction of roads, bridges, flood control, and other infra projects for public purposes of national government agencies, including DPWH, EOTR, DEPEG, DA, DOH, SHED, DOE, and NIA. So what are the requirements needed to facilitate the immediate processing of applications? We have three. The final and approved infra development plan with free charting. This is usually in the form of road alignment plan, building plan, detailed engineering design, or any similar plans. Certified through copy of clearance or resolution from PAMBI. This clearance should include an endorsement from the EMB Regional Office to determine whether the development project or activity is eligible for a certificate of non-coverage or should undergo the scoping process under the EIS system. Clearance from Palawan Council for Sustainable Development and Philippine Coconut Authority as applicable. Of course, you will need a PCSD clearance if the location is within the province of Palawan and permit from PCA if you will be cutting coconut trees. In order to streamline the application process, requirements are simplified and approving authority is delegated to Senor implementing PENDO. Applications for tree cutting and or earth volume permits may be processed and issued pending the application of forest tenure agreement. You see, we have been receiving queries and reports if you will no longer be applying for a tenure instrument because of item number 5 under application requirements of DAO 2020-06 which states that TCP or earth volume permit may be processed and issued without an approved tenure instrument. This is to further clarify and resolve that the policy is only referring to the copy of the approved tenure instrument for the removal and relegation of trees affected by infra projects of the identified NGAs being no longer a documentary requirement to be attached in the cut, tree cutting or earth volume permit applications. However, if these NGAs will intend to occupy the forest land and or develop the land for a certain period of time regardless of purpose, the issuance of the newer instrument such as the Special Land Use Plan or Forest Land Use Agreement must still be secured from the DNR. Upon submission of complete documentary requirements by a particular national government agency, the concerned sender or implementing PENRA shall issue the corresponding tree cutting permit and or earth volume permit within three working days, indicating that the number of trees based on the analysis of the appropriate infra plan with tree charting or if necessary on the result of actual ocular inspection. The determination of the number of trees Location and species nomenclature or common name, classification if naturally growing or planted, and corresponding volume shall be verified and determined upon the conduct of geotagging and tree scaling by the concerned center implementing PENRO during the actual tree cutting activities. These shall serve as basis for determining the tree replacement, schedule of hauling logs, computation of forest charges, and among others. Remember, Tree removal and relegation operations, including turnover and transport of logs, shall only be done under the presence and close supervision of the DNR. Okay, since we are done with refreshing ourselves with the regulations governing the cutting of naturally growing trees within public forest lands and private lands, we will now be turning our discussion to a policy that is a result of the government's fervent support to the wood producers and business groups engaged in commercial timber production or tree plantation in the Philippines. And that is the DAO 2020-18 or the Act Promoting Tree Plantation Development and Liberalizing Harvesting and Transport of Planted Trees and Tree Derivatives for Inclusive Growth and Sustainable Development which is pursuant to PD705 and Executive Order No. 192 Sears of 1987. This guideline aims to accelerate the establishment of tree plantations in production forest lands to meet the wood requirements of the country 
by simplifying the requirements in the harvest and transport of planted trees and tree derivatives and to encourage tree plantation development in private lands. This order shall cover plantation establishment, certification, harvesting, and transport of planted trees and tree derivatives. In this policy, tree derivatives are defined as any material extracted or taken from trees such as but not limited to roots, bark, stump, branches, leaves, and the like. It shall not include naturally growing trees within forest lands consistent with the provisions of EO23. Further, saps and resins are not considered as tree deriv derivatives as such, its gathering, harvesting, and transport shall be governed by other specific policy. The scope of the policy covers the establishment, certification, harvesting, and transport of planted trees and tree derivatives that are either located in forest lands with existing tenure or management agreement or situated within registered private tree plantations. Holders of DNR tenure agreements or management inside production forest lands shall follow these harvesting and transportation procedures. Number one, all activities which include the planting, harvesting, and wood processing schedules in the area shall be in accordance with the approved management plan as required under existing regulations. Number two, prior to harvesting of planted trees, a 5% inventory shall be conducted by licensed foresters based on existing laws, rules, and regulations. The prescribed timber inventory report should be signed by a duly right licensed forester and submitted to the Seno office or implementing PENDRO for information, database, and monitoring purposes. Number three, logs and three derivatives to be transported outside of the near area shall be accompanied by the original copy of certification stating that the products are from tenured or managed forest plantations. The certification shall be issued by a third-party tree plantation certifier, duly registered or accredited by the DNR. The said certification shall be displayed prominently in the vehicle where the products will be carried and a copy of it shall be submitted to the center office for information and database. Remember that the certification is not needed if the logs and three derivatives will be utilized within the tenured or managed areas. Private landowners are hereby encouraged to establish three plantations, harvest, and transfer the same as they seem fit. Private landowners shall follow these harvesting and transportation guidelines. Number one, when a private landowner will engage in tree plantation, he or she shall register said tree plantation to the nearest Senora implementing PENRO. No fees shall be collected by the Senora implementing PENRO for, for these services. Private landowners with a certificate of tree plantation ownership do not need to register again as these are still valid. Number two, no tree cutting permit and self monitoring forms are required in the harvesting and transporting of harvested logs from registered tree plantations. Only the certification issued by a third-party tree plantation certifier, duly registered or accredited by the DNR, shall be secured for harvesting and transporting said logs or trees. For ease of transport, the logs and tree derivatives shall be accompanied by the original copy of certification stating that the products are from the landowner's private property. The certification shall be issued by a third-party tree plantation certifier duly registered or accredited by the DNO. The said certification shall also be displayed prominently in the vehicle where the log or derivatives will be carried and a copy of it shall be submitted to the Senor implementing PENO for information and database. Lastly, the certification is not needed if the logs and tree derivatives will be utilized inside the private plantation. Please take note that this policy completely repeals DMO 99-20 on the Certificate of Tree Plantation Ownership or CTPO or the Private Tree Plantation Ownership Certificate or PTPOC as they term it in other regions and DAO 1994-07 or the issuance of Certificate of Origin for Logs, Timber, Lumber, and Non-Timber Forest Products which are being discussed in their respective policies lengthily. The major feature of this policy, aside from repeating the policies I have mentioned a while ago, 
is the tree plantation certifier. Tree plantation certifiers are any duly registered corporation or group engaged in forestry services and registered or accredited by the DNR to certify that harvested logs and tree derivatives for transport are planted from tree plantations. The Forest Management Bureau will develop a training program for tree plantation certification and issue the necessary guidelines for the recognition of third-party certifiers, responsibility and accountability, including penalties and liabilities in case of violations of certifiers, certification fees, and among others. Only duly licensed foresters of recognized corporations or groups shall be considered for certification training. The draft guidelines on the recognition of tree plantation certifiers is currently being reviewed by this office and the training program will be institutionalized upon approval of the guidelines. Also, one of the good elements of this policy is the introduction of vertical integration. Vertical integration is a strategy in improving production efficiency of food-based enterprises by controlling two or more bosses in the supply chain, such as tree growing, harvesting wood processing, value adding and distribution, or marketing. To put into context, Private landowners with registered tree plantations and holders of tenure agreements or management arrangements are encouraged to apply and establish their own wood processing plants to promote vertical integration. To wrap things up and just to give you a very quick recap, we have three recently approved policies related to tree cutting, namely DAO 2020-06, DAO 2020-18, and DAO 2021-06. 11. So, DAO 2020-06 provides for the issuance of tree cutting permit by the concerned center implementing PENDRO for the cutting and or earth falling of naturally growing and planted trees within private lands and forest lands. Provided that the trees to be cut are for public purposes, duly certified by, by the identified national government agencies such as the DPWH, DOTR, DEPED, SHED, DOE, and NIA. DAO 2020-18 provides for the registration of private tree plantation at the nearest center implementing PENDO to allow harvesting of trees. It also provides for the issuance of certification to allow the transport of trees or logs outside these plantations. This certification will be issued by the third-party plantation certifier duly registered or accredited by the DNR. And finally, DAO 2021-11 provides for the issuance of three cutting permit by the Regional Executive Director for the cutting, removal, and or relocation of naturally growing trees within private and public or forest lands. I hope you have enjoyed and learned something new today.